Now let's look into the uh, regress block. So getting back to the proc script, uh, we just finished scaling. So the regress block starts off with a, with a few 1dtool.py commands and then uh, gets into 3 d convolve. So let's start off and just verify what's being done at the top here. So recall that above we ran 3D Valrig to generate our motion parameters and we stored them all in this dfile underscore rall.1d file. So now uh, just for convenience and uh, for a handful of reasons we're going to mess with that uh, a few different times. So at one point we compute dmain motion parameters. So that is to say for each run we subtract out the mean. And that's not too important for the regression, except that uh, for the few people on the planet, if there are any uh, anymore, that uh, want to use the polar at zero terms from the regression as the baseline, then you'd rather not have some of these regresses of no interest with uh, non-zero means to distort that baseline estimation. So uh, it is nicer to remove the mean from each run of the motion parameters. Of course the mean across all the runs is zero as well. Uh, and then we compute uh, motion parameter differences, actually the first differences. And then um, in in our example, uh, if we go back briefly to list our proc command, fneproc.py command, we wanted to uh, regress motion per run. And to do that, uh, above we had computed the motion parameters per run, but uh, those have to be padded uh, so that there's still 450 row regressors, but that they're um, one set of six per run. In this case, we start off with the, the full motion parameters, demeaned or not, demeaned is great. We'd still rather have the uh, zero mean value uh, regressors. But then, uh, in this case, our runs are of equal length, so we can set runs n runs 3. If the runs uh, varied in terms of the number of time points, we'd have a different option to specify that. But in this case, they're equal. So uh, just split into padded runs. So basically, this file right here, motiondmean.1d, is uh, 450 rows of six columns. I look at the top 10 lines, we see the, you know, the six columns. So it's just the same as motion parameters, but the mean has been removed. And uh, we'll, we'll pad those into multiple runs in that uh, for each of the three runs here, we'll break, for example, this first column, which I can't uh, highlight with my cursor, we'll break the first column um, to have non-zero values in only run one and then a separate regressor with run two and then a separate regressor with one three so to look at this let's just let's plot this 1d plot dash separate scaling dash valrig and the motion parameters so there are, there are the motion parameters and notice these these hover around uh, zero now as opposed to the uh original motion parameters in here which do not so fantastic and now uh, now we split this into multiple runs and uh, it's called multi mean so let's look at those files I've got my I left my 1d plot command running in the foreground here so the window is still uh, active in my terminal window so just as a reminder I can type control Z you kind of see uh, shown on the screen after I type it, which suspends that process. Uh, but now it's not running. And to keep it, if I type jobs, it'll show that it's suspended. And if I now put it in the background, it's as if we had typed the same command as originally, but with the ampersand after it. So now it should be running in the background. So given that, uh, let's look at the multi mean files. Oh, we have them from each for each run. So we've got run one, run two, and one run three. If we do one d plot, and instead of 
instead of that file, I'll just grab uh, the run one output from this. You see that it's got run one motion, but then it's zero the whole time after that. And that applies to runs two and three as well. So, so this is just setting it up so we have three motion parameters fi parameter files, one for each run, and each one of those has is zero outside of the current run, its current run. Uh, so now that we have, we took the motion parameters, we demean them, uh, we took the first differences, just just so you can see it, we can compare the demean motion parameters to the first difference, just to give you a feel for it. Actually, if we look at the, just so you see the numbers, if we look at the top 10 lines of the motion parameters and the top 10 lines of the demean, um, no, oh, actually, this this isn't it, this isn't so helpful looking at these because these are not actually like this line isn't the difference of this and this though it should be it is that difference the, the index two minus index one would go at uh, index two except that they are demeaned so after the first difference is computed the current time point minus the previous time point. Uh, they are then demeaned. So the first time point would have been zero. So essentially this is showing you the negative of the average of this per run. So uh, so what I was going to show you isn't quite as useful, but let's just plot these things. So 1D plot, there's sep scale, there's valreg, this, and I'll put it in the background this time. And and then let's do the same thing with the uh, motion driv file. In uh, yeah, that's fine. Incidentally, you can use the arrows to navigate on the command line. Uh, you can use Control A depending on how your terminal is set up. Control A to go to the beginning and Control E to go to the end. And I actually use Control B sometimes to go backwards, but arrows are fine. And then you can edit the command and then hit Enter when you're happy. So fantastic. So now we see uh, the motion parameters and their first differences uh, paired up here. So for example, uh, that two degree head rotation that we snuck into the data in the motion demean time series, we see is actually if, as the first difference is two motions because uh, the, the head, re head nods and then it returns to the prior position. So that's actually one nod and then a return, so it's two motions. Anyway, so this is the first difference of uh, the, the bottom plot is the first difference of the corresponding top plot time series. Okay, any questions about that? No? Good. Cue to quit. Um, then we create a sensor file. It could be from this one, or it could be, or it could be from the demeaned. It doesn't really uh well actually does matter in this case no it doesn't it's still taking the first differences so this is going to take the first differences and then uh, the, the first differences show you the change between the current time point and the prior one uh, um, not the demeaned versions but uh, before demeaning uh, so when you when you note the difference between the current time point and the previous one, that's showing you a change in in uh, location to some degree. So when we're deciding on whether to sensor, we we want to get more of a single measure uh, to say what's the what's the motion for this current time point. So to do that, we take the motion parameters, we take the first difference, we don't demean it, but then we take the Euclidean norm the square root of the sum of the squares. And we take the Euclidean norm as opposed to like the sum of the absolute values or something like that because uh, in, in 3D space if you've got uh, you know if you imagine a cube or something and how far is it from one corner to the opposite corner uh, the side lengths are one and one and one the distance is the square 
is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, square root of 3. Uh, it's not 3, it's not 1 plus 1 plus 1, as some cases do. A difference, a distance of 3 would be a greater distance than a shift of 1 in 3 dimensions. But anyway, we take uh, the first difference and we actually include uh, the we actually include the uh, um, the rotations in this. So our, our d file, if we uh, if we just one d plot that again, oh that was it that I was editing right here. Our our motion parameters. If we take the square uh, the square root of the sum of the squares of the first differences of all six of these uh, time series at each time point, uh, then we're basically saying that. Uh, rotations are measured the same way that these shifts are and that's more or less okay in a in a human a one degree rotation these are in degrees they're not in radians in a in a human uh, a one degree rotation uh, is about a millimeter from the center of the volume uh, most of the way to the cortex so it's approximately accurate where you are in the brain or the actual distance from the center of rotation is what determines the real distance and of course that's going to vary across the volume but you know approximating it with one millimeter is is, uh, is reasonable in uh, in humans so we just equate all this stuff and that's uh, that works well enough and then the, the units here are approximate millimeters so not exactly millimeters so uh, we create some, uh, then we create a sensor file like that, and we create multiple files, motion underscore star, so if we ls motion underscore star, uh, you see we have, we'll actually sort these over time, so we initially created the demean and the first differences, and then in this command here, we have motion underscore subject ID, and we created the enorm time series that I just talked about, and then a couple of sensor files. And the 1D, uh, sensor 1D is the one that we care about for this step, but the, the enorm file is nice to look at too. If we just plot that, uh, this shows us, this is a real estimation of motion based on the uh, motion registration parameters from 3D Volrig. So, Again, you see two two spikes early on around that time point forty two, and basically, uh, recall in our apneproc.py command, we wanted to sensor motion greater than point three millimeters or approximate millimeters. So that is to say, we at at point three on the y-axis here. This is the approximate millimeters on the y-axis. The right. The x-axis is uh, uh, time indices. So at point three, if we're drawing a horizontal line across the screen, you know we'll get some censoring here, here, and possibly here. But it looks like this one gets just below it, so maybe not. And that'll be the sensor time series from this. If I squeeze that up a little bit, let's do one D plot on the uh, FT sensor time series and I'll just line these up so we can see them together well enough reasonably enough and there you see where this we're censoring the sensor time series is all one except it drops to zero for any time point that gets censored so we lose a couple time points there and another time point there it looks like so fantastic so I'll quit out of those, and just to show you, you know, we just we just did one D plot on this, but the file itself is all ones and zeros. It's ones where we keep the time point, and zeros where we don't. And the enorm is just a time series of those, uh, say, a, uh, absolute magnitudes of estimated motion. But recall also that we had. Done, uh, we had chosen to do censoring on the outliers as well. 
and we already made a sensor file for that and so the next the last step here the last Wendy tool command here inputs uh, oh no the 1d eval command here uh, combines those two sensor files so we just created a motion sensor file we already had a previous sensor file from the outliers and we just multiply them and multiplying them means the zeros will the zeros in either one of them will make uh, the final result zero so the combined the sensor combined time series uh, the, the two there is the index it's our now we've it's a combination of two sensor files that's the final one that we'll be applying so if we 1d plot sensor ft combine two uh, it looks the same as the the censoring from the enorm so it just happens that the outliers didn't find anything new say and then one last step we we use one uh, one d tool.py to make a list of time points that were not censored that'll be applied later in the script but that's mostly uh, like when we want to compute um, various well let me show you directly I'll just search for KTRs and we can see where it's applied so here when we're computing temporal signal to noise estimates we're not going to include the time points that were censored and also oh that's it we don't have the other part where it's used in some cases so that's the only place the uh, uh, kept time points are used in the script And just to just to see it, I'll run this on the command line so you can see the output. If we run uh, dash in file sensor sensor ft sensor ft yep sensor ft oops I've got a dash there that's why I'm not tab completing and then I'll just grab the show TRs and censored encoded so that command well I'll put a list of time indices and this is uh, this is like AFNI subric selection or time point selection so then those that string can be applied later on uh, inside the square brackets okay so I think I'll just uh, in this uh, video right here and then we'll get into 3D Deconvolve in the next one.